It was discovered two decades later. What was your inner voice saying to you? What was your inner voice saying to you? As you waited for me to speak. My words now being digested by your ears and in doing so populating your mind with images. Well, why don't you listen to my words just for a little bit longer and dampen your inner voice? Things often go missing. We can't find them. We say they're lost. But then they either turn up or we find them again. So were they ever really lost? Should we then not say whereabouts unknown? It was 1822 and the English schooner prepared to set sail. Its destination, the Antarctic. The crew stood on decks, waving to their loved ones on the quayside, shouting their goodbyes with promises of intent upon their return, whilst the captain himself was below decks, plotting his maps and altering his charts. It didn't take long before the Jenny was but a dot on the horizon as she set sail. Sightings of the Jenny as she carried on on their journey were made by other various vessels and when they got home or to port these messages were passed back to the loved ones who had waved the Jenny's crew off. The journey continued without much of ado but there was one obstacle remaining for the Jenny, the Drake's Passage. An area where the Southern Ocean met the Pacific Ocean where these two great oceans fought out for dominancy and in doing so, generated currents that would rip the ship's hull apart and also waves of mountainous statues stood upon them. Nobody heard from the Jenny. The Jenny was seen no more. Whereabouts unknown. However, in 1842, she was discovered. She was discovered by a ship called Hope. What the sailors of the Jenny had wished for had finally arrived, albeit two decades too late. As the Hope sailed towards the Jenny, the Hope's crew shouted messages of welcome to the crew that they could see standing on the decks of the Jenny. But no messages were shouted back. Ahoy! fell on silent ears. The Hope pulled alongside the Jenny and Captain Brighton stepped on board. To him, it was instantly obvious as to why the crew of the Jenny had not replied to the cries from his ship. They were frozen solid, statuesque in carrying out the last order that they were given. Brighton needed to go to one place to find one man and that was the captain of the Jenny. He slid across the decks, an ice sheet. He gripped ropes that were just cords of ice and he started to reverse down below decks. The ice crystals in the walls forming minuscule little lights as though lighting his path, his direction he needed to travel until he came across the door to the captain's office. Brighton tried the handle of the door. The sharp frost bit through his glove. He then leant against the door, and as he shoved, small crystals fell. The door opened with a creak, and for the first time, the first time in two decades, another mariner stepped inside the captain's cabin. There, still at his desk, frozen, was the captain of the Jenny. Captain Brighton had discovered the captain of the Jenny, the last man standing. 
What were his thoughts? What was his inner voice saying to him? The captain, a man of moral fibre, one more used to giving orders than actually taking them. How long would it have taken him to descend back down the ranks to deckhand? So that once there, he would dutifully carry out the orders back to him by his inner voice. The battle between social decency and survival. Like the battle being fought out by the two opposing currents beneath the hull of his ship. One will never know the final order that the captain carried out, the order that was barked to him by his inner voice. But if one cares to read the final entry in his log, it will suggest what it could have possibly been without it actually being a signed statement. The captain of the Jenny, frozen, still holding the quill in his right hand, his face nodding down to the open pages of his logbook, a logbook that was dated with the last entry, the 4th of May, 1823. The words that he had written simply stated, I am on my own. I am the last man. 71 days without food. Accounts say that the crew of the Jenny, in accordance with maritime tradition, were buried at sea. Whilst others actually point to the fact that it was only the captain's logbook that was removed. If this was the case, this then left the Jenny once free from its two decade solitary confinement in an ice barrier to once again sail the Southern Oceans. But this time, navigated by the prevailing wind and the opposing currents beneath her. A ghost ship. A ghost ship that is still sighted to this day. Shortly, my words will cease. And the images that they created in your mind will disappear. Whereabouts unknown. When this happens, what will your inner voice be saying to you? <laughs>